because no, no, no. You could see mine. No, no, no. We're okay. All right, you ready? Yeah, I'm ready. Okay. So we need your screen starting. Any questions you have, like before the game fully commences, then just ask them now. Um. Trying to think. I was gonna ask you about champ pool. Okay. Uh, in your mid main. I'm a mid main. Yeah. Okay. At least I like to consider myself one. I would suggest Oriana, Rise, Lulu. Oriana, Rise, Lulu. Oriana, Rise. Yeah, Oriana Rise Lulu is is a good three core, and then uh, I I I don't advocate like it's just my opinion. Don't take it as gospel. You know what I mean? Like you can you can do whatever you want, but as as my opinion, um, if you're trying to improve at the game and you're trying to get better, uh, don't play champions that are ultra unique. And what I mean by that is like stay away from Twisted Fate, stay away from Twi uh, Yasuo, stay away from Zed. You know, stay away from Kassadin, Um and like obviously they're not all like ultra unique but some of them like they're the reason that they're good or why they can be good um is is way it how do i like explain it like cost it in, in the hands of someone that's not really really good is not actually cost it in. right it, yeah. it's not actually cost it in. so it's like you know like um just stay away from them and improve your core mechanics improve your, your you know your core uh, map awareness, your core, you know, itemizations, your game knowledge, etc., and play it, you know, a rel want a rel wounded, well rounded. There you go, uh, champion pool. Or, uh, everything's normal. Now, one thing that I will recommend to you, if you don't do it, is to do the 252 uh, dot a award. Um, I just use dot a as a reference. There's tons of players that use it, but hopefully, if I say this name like long enough, it'll actually just stick in people's heads and they don't just forget. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, so it's like I got you. it's like the insect. Everyone, you know what I mean? Everyone recognizes that Lee Sin move as the insect. So uh, attaching hey, a pro name to it helps people remember it and recognize it. So it's not hard to remember for me. Remember, I said I was a dot a fanboy. So no, it's okay. Um, so something that's pretty bad right here. Okay, that I'm gonna show you. Hit me. All right, hold on one second. Now, something that you should be... Oh, God. Okay. So, w within this freeze frame, right? Okay? Okay. Right. What you're seeing right here is when Syndra moves like this. Now, Syndra is a champion that you always want to be standing um, vertical while mimicking her movements by moving parallel. Do you know what I mean by that? Does so, that make sense? when you say parallel, like, for example, right now I should be over on the other side of the caster minions. You should be you, you should be somewhere like around here. You shouldn't be right oh. here. Now obviously you're moving towards there because you're your cursor, so that's good. Okay, so this is what's good. Now when you get here and Syndra's over here, okay, she's obviously her her face, this is something that's really important to pay attention to. Her face is where her cursor is. Okay? okay. So if she clicked, if Syndra, you know, for instance, clicked down here, her body would still be in the same exact location it is, like the you know what I mean? The avatar. But her yeah. face would be looking a different direction. So it tells you what direction she's DIing to. Do you know what I mean? And when you yeah. know that, you can also then predict where her next cursor movement's gonna go. So watching the opponent's face is really important. And then in a matchup like Ari, where your skill shots are linear, do you know what I mean? Um, yeah. it, it's really important to watch their faces because you always want to be looking for maximum opportunity. And now if, say for instance, you, you get to here and then you walk up here, right? You have an orb shot that can go all the way through here, and the hitbox will chunk that, it'll chunk that, it'll chunk that, and then it zones Syndra out of being able to stand like this, okay? And with yeah. these minions being here, she wants to queue these minions, but if she goes to queue you, you have easy dash dance vertically. Do you know what I mean? Like, you can move to top left, or you can move to southwest, okay? You're never gonna you move backwards. Dash dance. When I mean when I say dash dance, I mean rapidly clicking between two arrows locations, okay? Oh, okay? And then obviously you have smaller arrows, whatever, and I'm not trying to draw a fucking star me. I know that you're a Blast Toys fan, judging by your description, <laughs> but like yeah. you know, like um like that that's all that you have to do, okay? So this is right. this is unique to not just Syndra and Ari, but other champions that share similar uh lane dynamics as Syndra and Ari, okay? So a similar lane dynamic would be something like Oriana, right? 
where her and Syndra has very, they have very similar radius movements and the way that they approach things are a little bit similar, whereas Orianna can be a little bit more aggressive due to the dynamic of her auto attacks and her passives, but for the most part, um, against a caster, a caster reliant, uh, you know, uh, ball thrower or something, or a skill shot champion, um, like Syndra, then the movements are obviously a little bit different than they are against, like, Orianna, okay? So, when, with the moving parallel thing, or, I guess, like, technically it's, like, opposite, you're, like, staying on the opposite side of them and trying to match them in that sense? Yes. Um, with that, is that something you want to do with every champion, like, all casters in mid lane, or is that, will it change depending on the kit? It depends on the kit, like I just said, about the, the okay. Orianna and Syndra. Um, okay. You know what I mean? So, yeah. like, okay, so let's say, for instance, you're facing a Rise, Okay. You don't want to be here. You don't want to be here. You don't want to be. You don't want to be away from your minions against Rise. As weird as that sounds, like if Syndra's Rise and he's right here, you want to be standing right here. You know, you want to be hugging your minions because if he walks in at you, okay, you want to be able to walk behind your minions and stay. You know what I mean? Like your, your minions. Like imagine Rise is sunlight and your minions are shade. Do you know what I mean? Like they can block the sunlight because that that's the way that you should play against Rise. Um, as an Ari or something, or at least in, against mid lane rise. Um, obviously not all champions will this be the same, you know what I mean? Because some champions will have different dynamics against him. So like Syndra or something, if Ryze is standing here and this is Syndra and not Ari, right? Where Ari is very, she's weak, you know what I mean? She's, she's very mobile in the earlier levels. Uh, she has the yeah. charm, she's reliant on linear skill shots. Syndra can move, you know, down here, or Syndra can move here. Do you know what I mean? Because then if Ryze yeah. comes over here, he has unit collision against the minions, so it creates perfect little boxes, you know, for Syndra's orbs. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Is, so, like, yeah, Syndra's a little bit different. But, um, depending on your champion's skills and how they act, your minions play a huge role in manipulating the lane dynamics. Okay. Okay? Yeah, I see what you're right. saying. Yeah. Okay, so, anyways, we're gonna continue the game, and we're gonna see if you do the dot A ward. Now, the, the one thing that you do is you do end up walking up here, and you don't auto this, you don't auto this, you don't auto this. Like, it doesn't make any sense. Um, I got you. Ari versus Syndra, if you can get the level 2, and you can try to gimp her with a charm, a charm Q, and it chunks her HP, while Syndra normally is a lane bully, if you can get her relatively low on HP or something, it's pretty good. Because then, if she also expends her mana on uh, on trying to counter harass you, if you successfully out-trade her, then it makes the Doron's Ring start for her really, really tedious, because then she has to kill minions to replenish the mana, and thus it saves you uh, trades in the later stages when she's level 4 and 5 with upgraded skill points. Okay. Okay? Does that all yeah, make sense? I what, yeah, I see what you're saying. Okay. Let's, uh... So, like, you're not prioritizing level 2. This is something that uh, is, is a big problem between lower elo players, is they don't understand the importance of level 2. Okay. So, the, I guess, reason I don't do it sometimes is I'm afraid to, like, push the wave and just get ganked. I've had some, like, nightmare experiences with uh, shoving and getting screwed, I guess, but I do see your point. Like, mm -hmm. so, when somebody says, like, you rush level 2, uh, what is the best way to do that without... Like shoving it too hard, if, if you get what I'm saying. Like, I mean, is there a by, single thing? By two right. minutes, by two minutes and thirty seconds, you can evaluate if you would have been level two ganked by the jungler. Okay, if the jungler does not come at two minutes and thirty seconds, and say he waits until two forty-five, two forty, and you blow a flash, that actually sets the jungler behind. Okay, while okay. it does give the enemy mid laner a little bit of breathing room over you, it's hardly noticeable because by the time flash does come back up, you know what I mean? Like level six still like isn't really in play. Um, not all the, not all the time anyway. Um, and what it does do is it gives your jungler an, an insurmountable lead over the enemy jungler. Do you know what I mean? Because by that yeah. point, they could actually almost have a level three and a half to a level two. Um, so it's, it's really, really big and it opens up a lot of room for counter jungling and it puts a lot of pressure on top lane. Okay. okay. Um, so the other thing is that, so if 230 comes to 240 and you see no jungler presence, you just simply do a dot A ward at 252 and no gank can happen to you. You're completely immune. Okay. Okay. Now, ninety-nine percent of the time. Obviously, you recommend warding uh, the side if you can figure out where they started. The side that would be their second buff, right? The 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 ward the ward placement. Um, I, I, there's no location for it yet, but basically, um, okay. So above this brush. Now, obviously, I don't have it in the screenshot, which is a, li a little bit unfortunate, right? 
There's a, uh, you see this flame right here? Yes. Okay, yeah. imagine, like, are you American or European? American. Okay, so you know inches. Um, okay, so about <laughs> three, I'm going to say three inches above this and to the left on top of the cliff, okay, is the dot A word. Right. You place that at 252. Oh, okay. okay. And okay. then, obviously, likewise, down here, it's the same exact way, okay? If okay. you have, like, a really powerful... You know what I mean? Shoving capability against a laner that can't shove back against you at all. So say like you're a, uh, you're a, a more like this is obviously a gross analogy, but like you're a Mordekaiser against a uh, a Kossadin, okay? And Mordekaiser just shoves him under tower from the very first wave, right? And the second wave comes and Mord hits it with an E before it even collides with your new wave. And then you hit it with another EQ or something, you know? And then one more E, and suddenly Kossadin's under tower with eight minions on top of him, right? Then you can go and do a deeper dot A ward, which is you just place it literally directly on top of the trees that go into wraiths, but still give you vision of river. Okay. Okay? Does that make yeah. sense? Alright. It does, yeah. Alright, we're good? Good. Yeah. Okay, like right here, you could be you could be eing to open up the minion wave, and then there's so many minions that if Syndra does choose to reciprocate damage, she's losing potency under tower for farming. This was really good, and now you can move into her because she's on cooldown. She's on cooldown, like like, like right there, right? She was on cooldown right. again. You can move into her to auto her again. Do you know what I mean? Like really, yeah. nitty, like these nitty gritty trades make or break mid lane. Okay, and now. I wasn't abusing the CDs at all. Right, you weren't abru uh, abusing the cooldowns. And look at how many minions you have, right? You have one, two, uh, you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Like, you have ten minions, okay? She has she has six, about to be five. If you shove this into the tower, she's gonna have to expend, like, 200 mana just to adequately CS. So you're attacking her mana by trading your mana, but you're trading less mana. So basically, view it like this, right? So, like, your Q. I, I actually don't know the mana cost off the top of my head. Um, whatever it is, okay? Like, I, I apologize, I don't know off the top of my head. It's okay. I think um, it's like 80, 80 or 90. Okay, let's say it's 80 or 90, okay? Let's say it's 80 for, you know, uh, for the, the sake of this conversation right now. Um, okay. You trade 80 mana to attack, I don't know, 210 of Syndra's. It, it's similar to an HP trade. Do you know what I mean? Like, would you yeah. trade 80 health for 210 health? The answer is yes. So in this sense, you're trading 80 mana to attack 210 mana. Okay, and if she runs, she's gonna have to use the spells, right? Right, right. She's gonna shove her under. Cool. She's gonna have to use the spells, and then she goes on cooldown. And some of her spells have big cooldown. You know, noticeably, uh, you know, her E and her W at earlier ranks and stuff till she begins yeah. to get CDR. And if that's the case, she's subbed under tower. And if she loses out on mana, she doesn't have any two v one capability. She doesn't have any two v two potency. And then on top of that, it can force an earlier recall. And depending on how Syndra wants to come to the lane, her goal is to get to around a thousand gold before she does a recall, so that she can get her chalice. And then you can calculate your own gold, and then you can use tab to see, like, if she's ahead of you by 3 CS, 5 CS, 6 CS, and then you can just do the math, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, and you can kind of see where she's standing gold-wise, and then you can tell when she's going to recall in consideration to her mana and how she's playing the lane. Yeah, that's smart. Okay. So, yeah, yeah. alright, we're good? Yeah, Okay. I'm bad. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh, f okay. No, there was something way better you could have done. Uh-oh. Okay, um, so I just want to get you to see it. Okay, we're gonna go really slow, really quick. Okay? Okay. Now, you have two options. Now, technically, you could throw the E and, and skim her with the hitbox. So, you you have that option. Right? Like, you can, you can throw the E so that it won't hit this minion. Like, you can change your, your face. Do you know what I mean? It's because it yeah. shoots out from your... You know what I mean? And you can you can throw it at, like... I don't know, like... Half an inch to the right of this flame, and the hitbox will skimmer to hit the charm. Um, alternatively, okay, there, there's another instance where you have something, because she, she ease you here. Okay? Right here, if you throw... Okay? If you throw a Q... Oops, sorry. 
you throw a Q like this, right? Oh, fuck. Right? There Obviously, I don't draw the straightest line, but it's gonna kill <laughs> this, it's gonna kill this, and then it'll hit her as well. And as you do it, instantly you press E. Because the Q will go off before the E, and the minions are out of the way, and it'll snap her with a charm. And if you snap her with a charm, you can get another auto auto off with Ignite, and she's dead. Yeah, okay. Okay? So there, there was two instances where you could have, like, punished her movements, and it went without punishment. And instead, you, like, tried to be really cutesy and, like, flash and do all these other things, and it, like, just... <laughs> do you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah, I see, yeah. There's no, reason, there's no reason to, like, do flashes and stuff. And you have Foxfire. So, like... So... That was... Yeah, see? Like, that was... It screwed up anyway, yeah. yeah. Did you even turn on Foxfire? No, yeah. that was so late. I mean, you're gonna kill her because oh, she flashed. What, <laughs> what is she doing? Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, Syndra. On the bright side, she's worse than me. There you go. All right. Now, now, okay. So, what what do you notice? Um, we're at 3:42. Hold on, let me just make sure of something. Uh, I can't even make sure of something. Shit. Um. Is is Jarvan their jungler? I believe so. Okay, then he, all right, because there wasn't a loading screen, and I'm like, so wait a minute, actually, who is the jungler? Um, if it is Jarvan, then he's in top lane, which means you can shove this wave. Damn. Yeah. Ugh. Gotta watch for more opportunities. That's yeah. Terrible. It's okay. And now you probably want to go into, like, Fiendish Codex or something, ideally. I think that's what I do. Okay. So, yeah, you just want to get this wave so that you have Fiendish Codex. Enough for another ward. Usually what I do, and obviously tell me if it's wrong or bad, but usually what I do is if I go back and all I have enough for is, like, uh, Dorn's Ring or if I die, obviously. That's like what I buy. But the normal thing is basically I start Dorn's Ring with two pots, and then I lead into Fiendish Codex, and then Sork Boots, and then I just finish DFG off that. Yeah, no, well, don't do that in every matchup, you know what I mean? Like, Yeah, or, well, that's, that's like the... Oh, wait, actually, go ahead. You're probably about to say No, that. okay. Um, I mean, don't do that in every matchup, but um, I item itemization aside, um, like... You shouldn't have a, a set itemization every single game. B uh, one of the things that comes with getting better is knowing how to slightly alter your build in consideration to how the game is going. Like right now, you got your team has two kills, right? right. And uh, there's a lot of pressure being put onto mid and top. Okay. Um, so basically, because there's a lot of pressure being put onto mid and top, it opens up opportunity for shutdown on Jarvan. And what I mean by that is if you can buy, like, two wards or something, right? And you place a ward at Jarvan's wraiths that also show his red, okay? And you also place a ward um, in the in the river brush that l is right behind blue on the right-hand side. Jarvan shut down. He can't gank mid, okay? And then your top laner places a ward in Tribrush at top lane, like where Skarner is right now, and he's fucked. He can't, he can't actually do anything. And those are the most pressured lanes right now, right? Mm -hmm. So it only leaves open... Um, a vulnerability to bot lane, but even with that river side ward that you have going, bot lane still is kind of safe because then they can just place a river, a uh, river board, a river ward brush, um, if they elect to shove. But they don't even need to shove right now because there's a babysit support. Okay, so there's a babysit support and a hyper carry. So like bot lane probably is going to be sho you know getting shoved in or whatever. And if bottom lane is getting shoved in, then the most likely way for Jarvan to go down to bot is not actually through river um, in front of dragon. It's behind, you know it's on your side, like through yeah. your red side jungle. So by placing that ward there, you also protect bot lane in a way. Okay, so okay. you you have an instance for shutdown potential, and because that is like something that is presented, you should accommodate to it. You know. And now one thing that's like really weird is like, look at how far back you're clicking. Syndra's dead, Jarvan's in top lane, Swain is dead. Why are you so far back? Just like get in front of the minions and kill it. You know what I mean? Like you're clicking backwards like you're afraid. And you even popped a potion, but you're gonna recall. So you just actually yeah. wasted 35 gold, you're negative two CS. Cause it's a completely ineffective potion. Do you know what I mean? And uh, yeah. ineffective gold is something that a lot of people don't consider. Um, and ineffective gold um, most commonly is seen inside of warding. Um, but, like, yeah. Okay. 
So, anyways, let's uh, speed up the game again. Oh, I am so bad. So Darwin just got killed, Swain's randomly chasing Skarner. I'm wearing lots of belts. What? Oh, that's my text tone for my roommate. My bad. <laughs> it's hooked up to my Bluetooth speaker. Yeah, yeah, so. yeah, okay. Alright, cool. Alright there, Corey. Yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna <laughs> turn that one off. <laughs> I don't know what I just heard. <laughs> but it puts the lotion on its skin. <laughs> it was jeans, man. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Alright. <Jesus. laughs> it's okay. <laughs> okay, so now, what's the other thing that you should be thinking about right now? Like, what, what is in, what's in your, your head right now? Inside of this lane at this given moment? Um, I have... Almost level six, so rushing like r rushing that would be giving me a decent kill potential because she's only like level four, maybe five right now. Right. Um, I need to place my wards because I have no idea where J four is right now. Um, it's too early for dragons, so not that that's for sure. But um, blue buff is going to be or buffs are going to respawn in a minute. But that's all I can think of. Okay. Well, the the main key factor is you get six off this wave, and you should like right now. Like, see this this instant freeze moment? See where you killed that minion? Yeah. You DI'd backwards. <laughs> should have DI'd forward. You, well, no, you should be standing, like, right here. Like, in this moment, like, no, here, I'm gonna show you where you should be standing, okay? So, like, right here, hold on, let me, uh, let me hit play in slow-mo so that I can get a perfect freeze capture. Okay, there we go. Um, in this moment... Right? Like, right here. Look at your XP bar. Right? Two minions away. Okay? Right. Two minions. Alright? So, because you're two minions away, alright, you should be standing here. Okay? Now, yes, this normally goes against what I said about Syndra. Okay? Like, you don't want to stand like this or whatever, okay? But, there are variables that are presented that allow you to go against, like, that, that law or that theory. You know what I mean? Yeah. Okay? So, you kill this minion... Okay, you DI forward, you kill this minion, you get right here. Okay, maybe Syndra uses E or something at that point. But you ping six. And all of a sudden, you can spirit rush here once. You can throw charm Q, okay? And then, like, okay. I don't know, we, we, move, we would move the screen again. And maybe then you can spirit rush here. And you throw something else. And then, you know, you both don't have summoners. And then you can spirit rush up one more time. You know what I mean? Like, northwest to stay outside of tower range. Um, yeah. And you hit her again. And you, just, you basically tell her to get the fuck out of the lane. And then when that happens, she's still five, okay? She misses this minion, misses this minion, she misses this minion, she maybe probably even misses that minion. So you just actually attacked almost 100 gold against her, and you prohibited her from getting six. Even though you blew everything, right? Like, you're you're gonna be really close to being monolith, but um, you, you shut her down. You know what I mean? So you're, you're taking yeah. disadvantages to gain advantages. And it's J Force top too, so. And, Dra and Jarvan Force top. Even if he wasn't top, you can, you know what I mean? Like if Jar, like she wouldn't be positioned like this if Jarvan Four was near the middle. So Just basically, my my uh, downfall so far has been that I play too afraid. Mm -hmm. Like I'm not pressing the advantages I need to. Like I think somehow she just used her Q, but she has some trump card where all of a sudden it's back up for no reason. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I got gotcha. you. All right. We're good. Yeah. Yeah. The, the normal button. <laughs> so you kill these minions, but now you don't have mana really for a full on burst. And that's also something that's important. Like, say you were playing Rise or something, I would always tell you to consistently stay at 500 to 600 mana. Do you know what I mean? For a full on extended duel. 
Um, with Ari, you know, you, you want to know your exact mana that you always have to be at for a full-on extended duel. And then you always want to hover around that point while staying in the laning phase. Now look at her, like, she shouldn't have been allowed to get that minion again. Like, yeah. you're, you're playing way too passive with your spirit rush, and you're not applying enough pressure in consideration to, like, look at her HP and her mana! <laughs> ah, and Ignite was gonna be up, like, and Flash would be up. I think that's what I'm waiting for, actually. Like, I think that's why I just hovered over it, was to check the damage. I think I'm waiting for it so I can all enter. No, what? <laughs> just do it! You could kill her with... <laughs> right now, you can kill... You can kill her with Spirit Rush, Foxfire, Ignite. You don't need anything else. And you're not doing it, and you're, like, not jumping. Look at that. You didn't even need Char- You don't need Ignite, thank God. See? You didn't need it the entire time. So it's like- Yeah. yeah I need to press things harder. So that, that's also one thing that's going on right now. Okay. I just missed two CS. That's okay though. I mean, like, you need to recall. Recall. Yep. You didn't need to move all the way back again. So it's like, there's no way anyone can come to you, and yet you're playing overly defensive sometimes. Like, n not only with the CS, but also with your recalls. So, <clears throat> now what are you gonna do? What are you gonna do? You have you have two kills, right? What, what, now what? Sork boots in Rome. Yes, exactly. There you go. What? No, not Rome. Just sork boots. Don't ro like you're you're punishing the shit out of Cinder. You don't need to roam. Okay. <laughs> what did you just get? I don't know. <laughs> what am I building? What the fuck? <laughs> What are you getting? Like, Talisman of Ascension? Like, what? <laughs> what the fuck am I doing? I don't actually even... I swear to Christ, I'm in Sword Boots. What? Am I building Morel and Omicron? I... don't want to know what you're building. Next level! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, next level. Yeah, okay. I got their Krillin. <laughs> <laughs> you hit your next level, it doesn't amount to anything, like... <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so, um, okay. Now, <clears throat> that ward's good. Explain to me, though. It could be better. You could have dot A warded. Um, but why is that ward good? Don't just randomly place it. Like, I want you to cognitively know the thought process as to why that ward is good. Um, well, the first thing I would say is because it's in my safe side. In my opinion, like I consider the right side of um, mid lane from blue side to be a lot more dangerous, and that's usually why I'm okay with putting the uh, ward in that bush is because it's weak. Like they, it's if he comes up from behind um, in the same way that you would on the right side of the lane, he's gonna walk underneath my tower yep. for the most part. Yeah. Um, and other than that, I feel like top and um, middle are, like you said earlier, the most pressured right now. So. Mm -hmm. If he does gank top, I feel like he'd be dumb enough to just walk right through, uh, bar like, by Baron. Okay. So. Well, the, 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 the main thing that you just had to say, like, the, the, all of that is okay. Like, you know what I mean? The main yeah. thing is that his red just came up, like, 20 seconds ago, oh. and he cleared it. You know what I mean? So he's on the red side jungle. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. Or, well, you should assume that he could be. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. uh, if he's, if he's playing correct and stuff, so. Okay. She just threw a Q. She's at half mana. She's on temporary cooldown. Punisher. Do you I know what I mean? Shit. So this is like... Oh, God. I don't, I don't even know. Oh, my God. What am I doing? Oh, my... Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like... <laughs> you're like the type of person that like you're like starving from hunger and food falls in front of you and you're like, nah, I'm gonna wait. Like <laughs> Save it. <laughs> yeah, save it. Yeah. <laughs> like Oh my god. <laughs> Alright, and now she left the lane, so what are you gonna do? You're gonna shove it as hard as you can, right? Yeah. Okay, good. Good. D you hit her! <laughs> <laughs> you gotta kill. I did something. <laughs> I did it, mom. I ate the food. Yeah. 
Now, see, if you had Sork Pen Boots, you wouldn't even need it to flash. <laughs> Probably not. <laughs> oh, that's okay. Um, alright. So, here, like, don't you oh, dare roam. Hey, hey, I yeah. know why I built it. Okay, uh, tell me. I went because of Swain? Yes. Okay. You're not gonna be dealing with Swain for the next, like, ten minutes. So there's no reason Bro. to have it right now. <laughs> right, right. No, I understand it, but you're not even gonna be dealing with him, you know? Yeah. So... Now you're overstaying here. Like, you shouldn't stay this long. Like, you can hit the tower a little bit, whatever. Now, though, because you did elect to stay, you have to shove the wave so that Syndra gets shoved in. Fortunately for you, it's a siege minion wave. Turn on Foxfire. Like, you turned on Foxfire and you walked away from them. You're like, no, I don't want to burn you. Like, <laughs> what is going on? Okay. So you recall. And you're obviously going to get Morella and Omicron. So do you think I should have just shoved in that first wave and come back for the cannon mini wave? Yeah. Back after that? Yeah, because look at your gold. Like, you get another Doron's ring that's cost inefficient because it, it's just a wasted item slot that you have to eventually resell. So, like, this point, it doesn't do anything, the stats. You know what I mean? Like, you're, past, yeah, you're beyond the point of needing uh, sustain, and you're beyond the point of needing those minute uh, combat stats. So it doesn't make any sense to get it. And had you just recalled earlier, your gold would have hit zero without compromising you. It would have been an efficient recall. And then because it's a siege minion wave, the wave would last longer in mid lane and you would return to it anyway. And then Syndra would be in the negative position because the lane would be reset. But um, What would you have recommended I build, or buy there on that back instead? Just wards and Morello, ward, wards, Morellos, and potions, right. Okay. You didn't need anything else. Get Foxfire again. Like, she just... Jump! J no! <laughs> <laughs> now, nah, <I'll> wait. <laughs> oh my god! Well, this game confirms Ari's not a lesbian. Like, I don't know. <laughs> like... <laughs> oh, fuck. again like okay no like you need to get more aggressive like <clears throat> she holds like the, the the fountain of youth okay like you need to oh, just shit. get did it did i fuck that ward up yeah you did fuck me jesus who's this fucking scrub we're watching yeah exactly no i'm kidding <laughs> i'm not kidding no i'm like no you shouldn't be <laughs> all right okay um You are not jumping on her. You would be the worst predator in the wild ever. You'd be like a fucking lion that like pets like cats. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> yeah. oh my god. People would like people in the wild would see you and they'd be like, oh, it's just him again. Like, you know? <laughs> <laughs> fucking, you they'd walk by that? you. You ever seen that YouTube video of the lion that's like protecting a goat from being eaten because it likes it? That's <laughs> basically you. I mean, it, the rest of its pride is like starving, but it, it's still saving the goat. <laughs> it's you. <laughs> oh my god. Holy shit. All right. Oh my god. You certainly eat balls well, though. I mean, oh now you fox fire. It doesn't even make sense. I mean, you got the kill, but, like... I had so many ample opportunities to do it. I know. It doesn't even make sense. I never said I was good. Oh, God. No, it's all right. Okay. <clears throat> so, I mean, it, it, it's good that you get the kill, and now, because dragons and objectives are going to become contestion, you want mobility, and you also want to start beginning uh, getting defense stats, okay? Um, so, okay, you get Sork Pen Boots. You can get... Some potions and some wards, right? And don't just get one ward. You, you're fucking, you're four zero with the CS lead. Like spread the wealth into your team, okay? Carrying does not mean winning your lane really hard. Carrying means getting a gold advantage over the enemy laner and reinvesting it into your team so that your team wins. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Okay. Carrying is not going five zero and getting so many items that your Q, W, E, and R speak for themselves and skill is irrelevant. That's not what carrying is. Okay? Carrying is going 5-0 and taking that 5-0 and putting it into all of your team members through proper itemization, warding, and rotations and objective control. 
And also, chaosing doesn't exist. I don't, I don't know if you believe in that, but it doesn't exist. I do not believe in chaosing. Alright, great. <clears throat> Best gank in A. Oh my god. You could have killed Fiddle. And now, like, you're staying down here, and, like, what? Okay, so, if you get the double kill, okay, this is okay. If you get it here. Okay, you, you get one kill. You could flash, you could have flashed cute and killed Jinx. Okay, if you get that, okay, because right now, look at the minimap, right? So we're gonna, we're gonna go into something, like, rotationally, okay? Because it doesn't matter that you get the kills. You're actually, the team, like, okay, if you get the double kills and you get the towers, it's okay. If you don't get these two kills, if Fiddle and Jinx don't fucking feel like, you know, He-Man and, like, Hercules, you know what I mean? Like, if they don't think that they're on top of the world and, like, continue to try to fight, you just get the tower, you don't get the kills. And if that is the case, so in higher elo, that will be the case, Fiddle and Jinx will just concede it to you. You know what I mean? Sorry, I'm, like, yeah. burping. I'm, I apologize. Um, okay, so, like, let's look at the minimap. What are you about to, okay, so you're gonna get a tower, right? So you get, you get the, the tower gold, you know, so you get uh, tower times 5, okay? Tower times 5 equals X, okay? X total team gold, okay? They, now you're not going to get CS on this, okay? Because all the CS waves cannot be divvied up between three people, okay? So you're going to end up splitting the CS. So you're going to get X, okay, plus 3 plus 3 equals Y, okay? Which is, this is like split up between maybe you and Tristana. So the 3 and the 3, like 3 minions, 3 minions. I'm just like you know, throwing shit out there, okay? Yeah. Then, you also have the factor of Z, which is negative XP, because then it's being divvied up between three people, okay? So you're hindering your XP amounts, okay? So you have negative XP, you have negative Z, okay? You have negative Y, and you have positive X, okay? So you have two negatives, one positive to be gained off this. Syndra, okay? Syndra gets times two Z, okay? Syndra gets times two Y, okay? And she also gets plus one X. Okay? So Syndra gets all these minion waves. She catches up because she's behind you right now. But you're giving her a chance to catch up. And if Jinx and Fiddle just retreat, it doesn't matter that you get the fucking tower. No one actually gives a shit because you're actually hurting your team as a whole. And normally, in some situations, um, like if I tell the AD carry and the support that they kill bot tower to rotate mid because then if their bot lane continues to push bottom and... Uh, like, they try to cap the tower, then your team caps mid-tower, they're constantly playing catch-up. So in this case, you might assume that, like, if you capture bottom and they capture mid, it's a similar scenario. But it's actually not. Because, okay, A, mid-tower is worth more, okay, because of the mid-game dynamics uh, than bottom-tower. Gold-wise, they're worth the same. Objective-wise, vision-wise, and importance-wise, they are worth nowhere near the same. It's not comparable. On top of that, their team is behind. Trading... When behind, okay, uh, or not trading, like, th this isn't a trade. Like, clearly we see this isn't a trade, right? The, it, it benefits their team. Okay? So trading when behind, as weird as this sounds, like, normally you wouldn't assume that trading when behind is, like, beneficial, but this isn't necessarily a trade. It works out better for them. Okay? So Syndra gets this, and then they're also going to cap top, top tower, because you elected to roam bottom. Now, if you stayed mid, okay, Tristana and Janna, they weren't in any trouble. Okay? If you stay mid, um, mid tower is dead, sure, but you're not shoving it into tier 2. If you shove it into tier 2, Syndra can't do shit. Jarvan is demanded mid. Okay? okay? It also, they lose control of their blue side jungle, and then you can roam bottom through blue side jungle, and it puts fear into, into Jinx and Fiddlesticks because of the fog of war fear. Okay? When you do that, you also gain control of a Drake, even though it's not up. If it was up, then you gain complete control of a Drake. Okay? Jarvan is then forced into blue side presence. Because if he elects to continue to stay red side when mid tower is no longer available for contestion and Syndra is insurmountably far behind and has to begin farming in front of her tier 1 dead tower or in between the tier 1 and tier 2, he doesn't really have much maneuverability there. Okay? And then when you put all of your focus on the blue side without actually ganking it or roaming to it, you control the mid and the jungler and you relieve all the pressure off top okay, okay so just yeah. because you killed mid it doesn't mean roam there's other ways to carry the game and there's other ways to apply pressure to objectives this is not the same dynamic as the 80 carry and the support killing the bot tower and then having to roam mid okay roaming in all instances does not mean that it's good just because you know and you've been like led to believe by the entire community of league of legends that ari has to roam or like you know what i mean it doesn't mean that she has to roam 
You know what I mean? Take that with a grain of salt. It is suggestive that she can roam. She has great mobility. She has great utility. She can roam. It doesn't mean that you must. There is no fucking law that says that Ari must roam. By not roaming, you do more for your team in this particular instance. If the dynamics were different, you and Syndra are even on CS, right? And uh, you both have blue buff or something. And bot is going even. And top is going even. And the jungler's, you know, doing all this random crazy stuff. Yeah, maybe you can shove in a wave and a half and then roam bottom to relieve pressure off bot because your lane is shoving. And by doing that, you give a minor advantage to Tr Tristana and Janna. That's when roams become beneficial. And by doing that roam, you also gain control over Drake. You get to ward, you know, the river brush to set down Jarvan. And it helps yourself out because you're going through the right side river and you're getting wards for yourself against Jarvan's right side ganks. I see what you're saying. So, basically, if I'm winning, why leave? Right. Like, why not? If you're I winning should, yeah. so hard, why leave? Okay. Okay? If it's okay. if you're just winning, no. Th like I just said, there is chance to leave. If you're even, there's chance to leave. If you are winning so hard that Syndra's, like, bleeding out of all of her pores, there's no reason to leave. You know? Play with your food. Yeah. <laughs> Literally. Honestly. And actually eat it. Right. Right. Like, it's like, it's like on all those fucking horror movies, you know what I mean? Like, the, the fucking killer has, the, like, the person dead, and he's, like, playing with them, and then he decides to leave the room for a second, and somehow, like, some heroic fucking friend shit happens. Like, that's basically what's happening. You just need to kill the fucker. Like, you don't leave the room, you don't, like, put on fucking childhood videos and watch them with the fucking, the victim, you know what I mean? Like, you just yeah. kill them, okay? Alright, we're good. Alright, we're good. We're gonna, we're gonna hit play. <clears throat> oh, shit. Are we, by the way, doing the second one today? Uh, I don't know how long this one's gonna go. If you want me to stop the Ari game, do you know what I mean? At one, it, it, it's completely up to you. The Ari game might just go to, you know what I mean? I don't know how you want to do it. Hey, that, yeah, that's fine. Okay. Uh, I don't even have a good Zed replay yet. That's why I was gonna ask, like, if this one ends okay. up going that long, that's fine. Okay. If it doesn't, then uh, I'd like to gather an actual decent Zed Sure, replay. sure, that's no problem. Alright. Go ahead, sorry. Yeah, no problem, no problem. So here on your recall, what are you going to do? I actually can't see anything. You're at 1,300 gold. What are you going to do? You're at 1,300 um, gold. I'm going to... buy a Seeker's Arm Guard? Why a Seeker's Arm Guard? They have two people that deal AD. Because I'm stupid? I don't know. I Could I build a Bissell Scepter? Abyssal, right, correct, Abyssal Scepter. You want to get MR for Drake fights and, and contestants, and you want to make it so that their main people that are meant to kill you can't. Because are then you playing it right now? Right now, yeah. Wait, did it freeze? Yeah, it's on the little drawing still, like in Sure, paint. let me, let me, uh, let me restart our screen share, okay? Okay, it's fine. Alright, we good? Yeah, I can see it now. Okay, good. Okay. Do I buy an English codex? Uh, I believe you, yeah, you do. So you shouldn't do that. Like right now, you're you're going into that mode where you're like you're building damage, 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 damage. In some cases, that is okay. But when the dynamics are presented, right, where like you this, you have six of your team's kills, you are fifty percent of your team's like kill gold, right? So right. how can you help your team in a team fight? Well, by living longer and by yeah. also making it so that even though you will demand attention, it's not as easy to kill you. And because two of the, well, three of their champions are dealing AP damage, okay, by getting an Abyssal Scepter, yeah, you also lower, you know what I mean, you lower their MOR and stuff, you get to deal a little bit more damage, and then you obviously get AP ratios out of the Abyssal Scepter and whatever. You get the MR, which makes it so Syndra can't just press three buttons and kill you, you know, it makes it so Swain, who deals periodic damage, is actually getting really fucking hurt by your, yeah. your flat MR, right? And then on top of that, Swain has a clock inside of teamfights because you have Merlin Omicons. Okay? okay. So like yeah. you have to you have to think about all of the uh So do you think Merlin Omicron is a bad buy in general? Like or, or in that given situation, like should I have not done that or should I still have built it at some should point have been, not that early? As I mentioned earlier, it should be your second or third item. Okay. You should have gone DFG into Morello's. And the other reason, the, the other thing that you want to do is um, if you're going to build a power item first, and what I mean by a power item is a, uh, how does Riot classify it? A legendary item? Is that what they call it or something? Like on I, their site? I have no idea. I, okay. know, I think I know what you mean, though, by like power Like, Zonia's, Deathcap, Lichbane, like a power yeah. item, right? Like, Morella and Omicron is not a power item. 
it's a uh, it's like a epic item. Like if we're gonna use like World of Warcraft, you know what I mean? Type terms, of yeah. for, right, like what like WoW terms. It's an epic item. If you're gonna get a legendary item first, which you should in most cases, okay, unless like your champion benefits from like a myriad of epic items or something, um, which some champions do benefit from that. <clears throat> um, you want to do that because epic items are generally easier to build into. And if they're easier to build into, it means that you have greater power strikes throughout extended trades in the mid-game and mid-game objective contestion. Okay? okay? Yeah. Alright. Uh, this is also a really long game considering like how it's going. Like, Their mid-AP carry is hyper shut down and you're ultra fed as an Ari against three twinks, like, oh, but he's gonna live and fiddle along. Yeah. Okay. Boom. That, that's a little bit unfortunate. <clears throat> now, see, if you had DFG there over Morellos. Could have killed him. You could have killed it, yeah. Yeah. No, but it doesn't matter. Um, fiddle being there is a little bit unfortunate. But you see, your lack of, uh, not your lack of warding, but your overall team's lack of warding. Okay. Um, it, it came into play there, and if you buy lots and lots and lots of wards, you'll... that stuff won't happen, and obviously, you just gave a shutdown to three people, which is gigantic. Um, so that's, that's a little bit unfortunate. Uh, should I have continued... If that's okay. Yeah, well, this VOD will also be up on Twitch, and it'll be uploaded, uh, to YouTube, so you'll be able to, uh, review everything. Alright, cool. No, you need defensive items! Honestly, no. Once you build your first core item, and then you get your you, your tier two item, and your tier two item can or your your second item, which sometimes can actually be considered boots, because not all champions they get their tier two boots as their second item. You know what I mean? Like uh, if you're playing like Master Yi or something, or like uh, Shaco, or if you're playing Kassadin, for instance, who doesn't even get boots um, unless he's tank Kassadin. Uh, you know, like <clears throat> it, your your second item should always have defensive components to it in most cases especially okay. especially if you're carrying hard so would it have been like decent to go um dfg into say like maybe a negatron cloak and then go morellos or would it have just been completely better to go dfg into abyssal and then get the morellos dfg into abyssal and then get the morellos for the reasons that i mentioned before about how you shouldn't have roamed yeah okay okay, okay. Um, okay, so let me let me go back to this fight. Okay, and you know, like, those, like, little, like, YouTube things that always pop up on Reddit, like, things Faker does? It's because mm -hmm. this situation has been played a million, not a million times, but it's been played a lot, okay? Whether right. he was the Renekton, or whether he was the Tristana, or whether he was the Janna or the Skarner, this situation has been played or a very similar situation like maybe jarvin is vi do you know what i mean and like he's yeah. three inches to the left instead of being exactly where he is in these situations they have a proper answer do you know what i mean in terms of movements and what you should be aiming to do and what you know as close as you can get to it so when this you know when this fight goes on or something okay it's not like it's fucking actual spur of the moment when you see this as a presentation okay um ah fuck okay sorry i just need to get a, a screenshot when you see this, okay, your eyes should be looking at Swain, Jarvan, Syndra, and Jinx. And then you should focus on, like, either an area in between them all, or you focus on one, and you let your peripheral vision. I know this is, like, really complex, but again, um, this is stuff to, like, work on throughout the course of months. Do you know what I mean? Like, that's why I'm telling it yeah. to you now. Um, y y your peripheral vision is what you, like, focus on, uh, the other champions. So, if you want to watch all four of them at once, maybe you can actually look, like, you can set your focus here. Do you know what I mean? And then you can kind yeah. of, in that vision, you can see the HP bar of Jarvan, you can see it of Syndra, you can see it of Jinx. And with the peripheral, you can still see that Swain's full HP. If you set your entire focus inside of this circle. Do you know what I mean? And yes. then, if you look at, uh, if you look at, if you, if you focus... Fuck. If you focus uh, entirely on Syndra, right, like you put your entire focus, you can still see about up to half of Jarvan's bar. Maybe if your your vision's stronger, you know what I mean? You can see more. You can see Jinx's fully, and then you can see Syndra. And then you can see all the movements that they're going to do. Do you know what I mean? So yeah, your goal, 
right? Is to like, your goal is to look for uh, alt potential with charm and with Q to do like maximum disruption. Okay. Okay? Yeah. So, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Um, all right, so we're gonna we're gonna play the the fight in slow mo, and I'm gonna okay. go over it. Okay. It goes terribly. Yeah. Now you don't have total gimp potential, right? Like you know that you don't have yeah, total gimp. Right. Exactly. But you can you can obliterate fiddlesticks. That's fiddle right here, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So you can obliterate you can obliterate fiddle. So from this freeze frame, get a no. Ah. So you jump in. Okay. Now the the max range on your E. Okay. Like you could probably be standing actually here, but you set your avatar to jump like here. Okay. To, okay. to hit the to hit the fear. So with your avatar hugging this and then like you could jump here with your your foxfire, okay? You send the E, you send the Q, you send the foxfire. Okay? Deleted. Okay? As soon as that happens, Syndra or someone is going to try to turn on you in some in some way, okay? Jinx is going to continue going the way that she's going because you have this player over here, okay? And then Swain's going to turn on you. As that happens, you can foxfire backwards, or not foxfire, I'm sorry, um, what is it called in English? Spirit Rush. Spirit Rush, okay. You can, you can Spirit Rush backwards, okay? And then Syndra's gonna chase you, and Swain is gonna chase you. They, now this is impassable terrain, okay? From this point, right here, this X, okay? You have beautiful potential for Qs. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And if they if they bunch up, if they both you know come in right here and they hit X marks the spot, you Q them and then you fox fire backwards again. And if you fox fire backwards to here, you can also run over to the you know the fence post. And if you know she comes over here or something, you can throw Qs over here. You can throw you know an E over here or something if anyone comes close to the wall. You should not go into this fight just because Skarna gets caught and just because like your other teammate is doing something really fucking stupid. It doesn't mean you do it too. If they want to blame you and be like, LOL, everyone report Ari, <laughs> you know, like, idiots, okay? You just ignore them, okay? Because if you just maintain a proper win rate, all right, idiotic mistakes, if you make good mistakes, you'll climb. I mean, if you make good choices and you just ignore bad mistakes and you just ignore the chat and then, like, blaming you and shit uh, because they jump in, you know what I mean, like hyenas, um, you'll, you'll, you'll climb. But just because they make bad choices, don't try to save them from it. Do you know what I mean? Because that, that yeah. generally leads to bad shit. Okay? Okay. Alright, we're good. Mm. Then you get to the back here, and you still have Spirit Rush, and you should just get the fuck out at this point. Like, it, it's pretty, like... Ugh. You guys kill Fiddle? See... Uh, he died while trying to hold. But, like, if you just got away, because, like, you saw Tristana on the minimap, you know what I mean? You could have gotten to her, and this this kind of would have been okay. I mean, Renekton's still in there, but, like, you guys are bunched up inside the Jarvan all, and, like, it was just poor positioning. And you're being really greedy. You have to view yourself as, like, a technical AP carry. You have to be, like, really cute and, like, pick your fights and stuff. And, like, right here, you're on full cooldown and stuff. Nothing's really being gained. Renekton didn't, didn't do his job, like, he was, like, trying to be a carry, you know what I mean? This is, uh, yeah. I, I was, you know, you know, like, um, it's whatever, it's just, uh, not fulfillment of roles. And I, as we see here, everyone's relatively low on HP. If you got those cooldowns off, maybe that equates to two more deaths. If you just backed out of the Jarvan ultimate, you're still alive. This doesn't happen, you know, like, it, it seems like every little... Uh, decision, okay? Because it's basically what, what creates advantage is micro decisions added up. Okay? Okay. Alright, we're good? Yeah. Okay. Uh, hit normal. <sighs> and now here's the issue with trying to go... Uh, epic item into legendary item. It's really, really, really awkward. Yeah.
And not in every case is Morello's I mean, in every case, Morello's is considered an epic item. But on every champion, it's not considered epic. Do you know what I mean? Like, say, uh, here's a WoW analogy, okay? On a Paladin, it's epic. On a Warrior, it's legendary. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, in terms uh, yeah, of... Yeah, I get what you're yeah. saying. <clears throat> so, like, maybe on an Orianna, who benefits way more from the CDR and, like, the raw AP, you know what I mean? Like, it, it's, it has more potency on her. But with you, it's like only for the fucking Swain right now. Yeah. Right now, anyway. Right now, anyway. Okay, you got the kill on Syndra, and then you back completely out of the fight. <laughs> when, like, they could have used you. I was terrified of the Fiddle. But Fiddle got killed. Yeah, I'm not saying I was right, I'm just... Trist Tristana, Tristana had all. If Fiddle started to channel, you know what I mean. Yeah. Um. On top of that, I don't even believe Fiddle had all, because he, he was died. When he jumped into the. Fight, oh, does he have a CDR? Sure. Wait. I swear to Christ, he had it. I'm uh, sorry. Like I'm, he, I'm itching my he eye right now. Into the fight with it. Oh, okay, okay. Okay, hold on. I was itching my eye. <clears throat> One second. Kill. Oh yeah, I guess so. Okay, all right. Yeah, but even then, it's like it's it's a non AP fiddle. Like, what are you afraid of? Yeah, that yeah. It's I. Uh, Don't tunnel vision I on the champion, need to right? Learn to gauge damage a lot better. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Which is another huge problem. Like the things I've been noticing from us going over this is like the big mistakes or bigger things I need to work on are gauging people's damage, like being aware of like how behind they are or how ahead they are so that I can gauge it. As well as obviously, um, second thing we went over was just making better choices in the sense of just because they make a bad play doesn't mean I have to follow up on it. Yeah. And then the most important thing I feel is in uh, just capitalizing on advantages. Like if they have an ability on cooldown or if they're clearly in range of one of my abilities, why right. am I not throwing it? Right, all right. Those are all your mechanical errors that we're, uh, we're noticing right now. Um, yeah. The other thing is, uh, when he flashes, you should just write it. Should what? A add, add five minutes and just type it in chat. Like, oh, okay, I see what you're saying. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like a timer on his... Yeah, uh, right. It, unless you can do it all mentally, do you know what I mean? Just, just write it. And even if you can't do it, uh, I mean, even if you can do it mentally, it helps out your teammates. Yeah. You know? So, uh... It's pretty important for, like, objective contestion and stuff. And, like, right here, like, just turn on your Foxfire and just yes this, like, way faster. Okay. I like seeing low HP people as Ari with my ult when it's up. Yeah? Do you like it's seeing like low candy. HP people? Yeah? Okay. <laughs> Jesus. Sounds like, like, a, some, like, some analogy, like, a pedophile would make, like, <laughs> like I don't, I don't know what to really say about that. Like, <laughs> you like, you like get a mod so that Ari's like a brown van that says ice cream on the side of it. <laughs> like your charm comes out and like low HP eats free. Yeah, <laughs> low HP eats. Free. Oh my god. <laughs> Oh my god. Fiddle's okay. cheeky. Fiddle's cheeky, yep. Fiddle all. Yep, see, look at Renekton. He's on top of that. He's <laughs> got that shit. Yep. <laughs> oh man. My build's terrible. Holy shit. This is, yeah, your build's actually hindering you in a lot of ways. Watch you build more damage here. Okay. <laughs> No, hey, you know what though? Probably you, will, yeah. You're getting you're getting a nice amount of words. And yes, the blue elixir is correct. I hope that you buy it. Do you buy it? Please I tell do. me you buy it. Yes, I do. do when it spawn, I'm okay, sure. good. Look at that bow. Hmm. <clears throat> okay. We require additional words. <laughs> Did you ever play StarCraft? Uh, yeah, it was a Diamond Protoss. Okay. More blue pots. You despise me because I was Protoss. <laughs> <laughs> 
No, 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 no. <laughs> Alright. So now in this instance, like, when you guys are shoved into your tutus, I mean, if you if you watched a lot of my videos, um, you'll you'll know what I what I say about these like type of rotations and stuff. It's just you, you let all the waves come to you, you farm them, and then you you pick fights at Drake and Baron. In this instance, obviously with how the game is going, it's probably gonna be a Baron. Um, so it's actually good that you got wards behind Baron and around Baron for your team. That's actually really smart, and uh, the the pink ward's good as well. So. This is all okay. And now they're obviously shoving bot tower because uh, it's the most important tower when the next objective up for contestant will be Baron. Yeah. Now, what could... Now, okay, if you were Renekton, I know that you're not Renekton, but I would coach you as if... You know, because sometimes you're going to be in this position and you're going to be the top laner, okay? You should actually be pushing top right now. You shouldn't be here at bottom. Because they don't actually have enough siege at this amount of time in the game and with the items that they have and stuff to actually break that tower. And if it does become a point where they could break it or something, your team can notify you. Um, oh, see? And if you had a Negatron cloak... <coughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay? And especially against Syndra, because the, neg the the flat MR comes into play against every orb. Right? I I'm pretty sure. Yeah, yeah like... God. It, they're all... Individually. You could you could technically even get Zonias. So say like the top laner wasn't uh, Swain or something. You could actually get Zonias against Syndra, and you just Zonias her ult. You know. And now you're getting okay double AP. But let's build armor. <laughs> That's fucking great. <laughs> and now uh, this game's lost, right? How can you? Why does this go on for another twenty I minutes? Think we win. I don't know how, but I think we win. What? They have, well, no, they don't have better scaling, but they have they have so much more gold than you right now, and it's solo queue. Like, okay. Wow. All right. Oh, that's oh, okay. Oh, you still catch her, right? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> oh. What? Huh? Moya? I don't know. Wait. You lived with like 12 HP, right? Did you even yeah. dip? Didn't even dip. Wait a minute. No! Oh, God. What did I. What? what should I, mean, I just EQ? Yeah, EQ. Yeah, EQ and, and keep running. Yeah. Yeah. It would have been fine. You would have you hit him. You would have hit him with the double orb. Do you know what I mean by that? It's a maximum range orb that, that applies both procs at once, the true damage and the regular. Yeah, the one when you hit him, like, right at the tip. And it right, like right, right. Yep. So you would have hit him with both, and he would have died. A double kill. It's okay. And, you know, yeah, maybe if you had Negatron Cloak, huh, you would have lived. <laughs> <It's>, <laughs> the build was bad. I don't condone it. Mm, good. Good. <clears throat> if you were an architect, you would find no work. <laughs> no, like. My name is Niad and I do not condone this message. <sighs> or build. Terrible. All the wards should be focused on Baron's side after like a Drake thing, but I guess they already have Drake. So like see like thing okay so like right here okay like this is like you, you see those fucking those things that make like top reddit videos right like right. things faker does so like this is another instance where like something is actually presented but you don't capitalize on it and it's just knowing that it exists and then gaining the mechanics to capitalize on it and punish a mistake do you know what i mean um yeah. so there, there's i don't well okay so here here here, here it is you see you see fiddlesticks, right? Mm. So, I'm just gonna, like, show it to you, okay? Like, you don't have to do it. Do you know what I mean? This is, like, don't try to make plays like this if, it, like, your rank game depends on it. But if, like, you're really far ahead and you want to start, like, you know what I mean? Testing your limits and, like, growing as a player, like, mechanically or something. When you saw Fiddle commit to walking past the brush, it doesn't even matter if Jarvan's here, okay? It actually just doesn't. You stay standing right here, okay? And then as soon as this happens, Spirit Rush. 
Charm, Death Fire Grasp, Q, Spirit Rush, Spirit Rush. Okay? And all of a sudden, you end up front page Reddit, okay? <laughs> like, that, that's... <laughs> it's not hard. It's really visible. Do you know what I mean? No, obviously, yeah. there's gonna be stuff that pro gamers do that actually is really fucking sick, and it has, like, super sick reactions, and you know what I mean? Like, it's really, yeah. it's really deserving of highlights, but this is really simple. Okay? Okay. Alright. Are we good? Good. <laughs> oh, you almost, well, you could have gotten a little bit closer with, uh, yeah. the spirit. Is she gonna throw the key? I'm gonna, I'm gonna, if I break my poker chips because of you, like, <laughs> like, <laughs> like, Hey, at least I admit it. Yeah. Even to my team. Yeah, I'm pretty sure we end up winning this. Through the grace of God. <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> Actually, I'd say more through the grace of just us all being bad. Including the enemy team. Okay. Oh my god. Ba da ba. Ba da ba. That's how you go. Is that the McDonald's theme? Yeah, of course. <laughs> <laughs> have you had? Do you guys have the jalapeno burgers over in Korea? Uh, no, no. They're so good. So, do you guys have the same menu as in no. the U.S.? Nope, nope, nope. No. Okay. We have some stuff that's similar, but not entirely the same. Best thing that you. He could have killed fiddlesticks. <gasps> Fuck. All right, team versus Swain. Holy like shit. <laughs> okay. Team versus Swain. Okay. <clears throat> Alright, let's let's skip let's skip ahead until like there's a team fight or something, okay? Okay. Because like this these dancings, you know what I mean? Like I could articulate it, but it would change so much every single game and like it's uh there's more important stuff. Like not roaming and abusing your advantages. Yeah. See? Mm -hmm. Okay, okay, nice. Here's here's a little fight that's about to come up. Okay. Fiddle does that. Your your goal is to guarantee Tristana's longevity. Okay. Like I know that you're also a carry, but at this point she's a bigger carry. You know what I mean? Inside of the base, she's a bigger carry. Outside of the base, right? Outside of the base, you are the bigger damage. Do you know what I mean? But inside yeah. the base, like on the defensive, she's the bigger damage. And that's also like a unique dynamic. Um, also, I don't know if you know this, but, like, let's say that you have 2,000 gold, okay? And you don't have Seekers yet. Are you gonna buy Seekers, or are you gonna buy Needlessly Large? Uh, Needlessly Large? No. In this, well, in this circumstance, you would get Needlessly Large, because you're pushed inside of your base, and, uh, you know, there's no, you don't know how you're gonna get the CS. Now, if your team's gonna guaranteedly give you the CS, it's better to get Seekers Arm Guard before getting Needlessly Large. You only get needlessly large rod if your if your champion has uh, two or more uh, ability power scaling ratios that benefit well with it. If they don't, then the seeker's arm guard is superior in almost every circumstance because you can get seeker's arm guard plus blue pot. 
and then you match the ability power, but you also get the chain vest, and you also get the 10% CDR. Okay. Okay? I see. Yeah. And somehow a Baron is taking- alright, Dignitas, like... WHAT WAS THAT, LOCO? HOLY SHIT! <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> Fuck. Okay. <laughs> oh my god. Okay. <laughs> Alright. Okay, now now you guys have Baron, right? So you're slowly recuperating, all right? Slowly, and one yeah. one thing that's important to factor in, it's not important when the game goes this late. Now, even though it's not a late game, it is it, it now it is actually hyper late game because like so much shit is opened up. Do you know what I mean? Um, yeah. But if it wasn't, it is important to calculate dragons, scaling dragons, amount of barons. Do you know what I mean? Towers and CS and stuff. I'm gonna start skipping. I'm pretty sure we just. Yep, it's good to get Sonya's here to sell the Dorons and get it. Yep. Okay. What? 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 <clears throat> okay. <laughs> oh! <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, words win games when you can't even cross the map. Like, So basically, you're on a boat that can only go like 10 miles, right? And all the darkness is 20 miles. And yet you're getting, like, you're getting flashlights. <laughs> like... <laughs> you know what the worst part is? I don't think I even realized I had enough gold to buy Zonias. <laughs> Poor own Zonias, you're taking it a little too far, like... <laughs> oh shit. Oh fuck. I think this catch is like what really turns the tide. Yeah? Do you think so? Do you think losing a player <laughs> at 35 minutes randomly is. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Alright. Just maybe. See, you're getting into the fight. I like it. You're getting down and dirty. <clears throat> and now just save your charm for Swain and time it as soon as the zonias end. And you didn't charm him. So, in laning phase, you don't jump on women, and then in later phases, you don't jump on birds, so I guess you're staying straight, so... <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's pretty good. J4, one and only. Yeah. <clears throat> that's a little bit weird how bad the fight went. Uh, it's a good thing Donna didn't want to cast all... I mean... <laughs> like, why do that? <laughs> if you had Zonias there, you could have even been way more aggressive. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And that's something I've come to realize, like, in the later games I've played, been playing, like, I typically get um, more defensive items, not second item like I should be, clearly. Mm -hmm. um, but, for example, like on Ari, if I'm doing really, really well and I get DFG first, because I will tell you lately what I have been building is Fiendish Codex into, like, boots if I'm winning the lane, and then um, from Sork Boots I just finish the DFG and go Zonias, typically. Hold on, well, let me show you something on this, this freeze frame okay. right here. Let me just... Let me. Okay. All right. Hold on. What uh? Charm. What 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 should you do? Charm. Yeah. Charm out Q W. Right. And he's dead. Hey, I have a question about Ari's kit. Okay. So when you use Spirit Rush, it basically creates three Foxfires, right? Okay, okay. And then throws them um, in the AoE. So if you pop W and then use Spirit Rush, are you wasting the Foxfires? I... Wait, what? You should you should R... Like, if you can't gap close, it's... Like, you just R in, you DFG first, okay? Like, as you R in, so everything goes off, right? Then you right. activate your skills. Well, but what I'm saying is like, okay, so say I'm in a, uh, I'm in a fight, W comes back up, I'm about to cast Spirit Rush for 
the second time, right, for a second charge. If I pop W and then J4 comes at me, he ults me, and I press R backwards, like, right as I press W, am I wasting those three Foxfires from using my W? No, they're separate, I believe. I believe. Okay. Okay. Because I wanted to make sure, because I could never tell if I'm wasting those, like, if the three from uh, Spirit Rush override the Foxfires mm -hmm. or not. Yeah, if you ever have, like, questions like that, I mean, obviously you may have them for other champions. It's, like, even when I have questions, like, that I don't know the answer to, like, maybe, like, how Miramana interacts with something or, like, whatever, I just, like, Google it. Okay. But uh, I'll, I'll look at a lot of links. I won't just, like, you know, click the first thing and, like, some random guy says that it does. You know what I mean? Like, I'll look for many people saying it. Yeah, the consensus. Right, or you can just go and test it yourself. Yeah, that's true. The red pot buy is nice, but it's a little bit early for the red pot buy. I would wait until you have uh, six items or something. Or if, like, an immediate fight is going to break out and you can't get another item. So, like, say that they're going to come at your Nexus turrets, right? And you only have, like, 700 gold. You can't get an item with it. You know what I mean? Just, yeah, get the two yeah. elixirs. We care about spelling in this game. Mm-hmm. I don't know if you've been reading the chat, but... Uh, I glance mm. at it occasionally. Alright. Okay. So we're nearing the end. And now all that you're, you really want to do is, like, just ignore Drake. If you can get it, you can get it, but it shouldn't be a focus. All ward focus should be on the mid lane. Um, in front of the tier 1 towers and your tier 2, like if you guys have to go on the defensive, and then it should be all around Baron. So, in this game, like if I was winning the same way I was, but say bot lane was losing really hard, mm -hmm. would it be more acceptable to roam in that situation? Bot lane was losing really hard and you're winning really hard? Yeah, like if, if that was the situation. You would roam top, not bottom. You fight fire with fire. You don't try to put the fire out. Okay. Do you know what I mean? Because basically, yeah. alright, that fire got as big as it was because whoever was in charge of not letting that fire get big didn't do a good job. Like, basically, they, like, added gasoline to it, okay? And okay. so, you come and you, you know, like, you use a lot of resources, right? Because technically you are a lot of resources on trying to put the fire out or, like, you, you know, you put the fire center on it. But then you have those same people that let the fire get out of hand in the first place. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, the fire's gonna reignite. So what it's you like do... It's giving a guy who shot himself in the leg another gun. Right, exactly, yeah, basically, right. Okay. That, that, that's, that's a good analogy. So, what you do is you go top, and you try, to, you try to light a fire for your top laner. And then you, plus the top laner, you collide with bot. Do you know what I mean? You fight fire with fire. Okay. okay. Yeah, I see what you're saying. But in most scenarios, like, if I'm winning this hard, I'll probably be better off just staying in my lane and stopping the mm -hmm. lane opponent. Okay. Alright. And I need to not build like an idiot. Yeah. That would help. Okay, let's watch the last fight. Looks like this will be it. Okay, so now this is the final dance. Now, when this is going to be the final dance, you should always want to be flanking Azari. Does that go for all assassins, or...? Uh, not all assassins. Some of them can be up in, up in their face, but for the majority of assassins, yeah, you want to you create a very weird arc for the enemy team and for your team. Okay. So you want to have weird angles. Like, right now, you're, like, with your team, 
but you're not like you know you're not Syndra. You like you don't need to be protected. Syndra is like um, all the king's men. Do you know what I mean? Like she needs protection. Do you know what yeah. I mean? She will carry you. She is an AP. You know what I mean? But she needs to be guarded by like her bishops and her fucking knights and everything. Um, you, on the other hand, are like the queen, where like you need to just be coming in from weird angles and shit to be applying pressure and like everything. But you're not you're not a king AP carry. You're a queen AP carry. And then obviously there's even more awkward AP carry, you know, AP carries that are like bishops and knights. If you want to keep using these analogies and shit. <clears throat> Jana. That was good, that was good, that was good. And you guys win off this, right? Fuck, fuck, fuck. Yeah, I believe so. Swain with the, <laughs> the latest fucking... Oh, why didn't you just cast Ignite? Oh, God, you should... When, when that comes up, right? Now, first off, you didn't use DFG, you didn't use Ignite. When you are going to guaranteedly just go down, do you know what I mean? Just spam whatever you can to help your teammates. Yeah. Okay, and it's a really great thing that Tristana didn't use her L. Heaven forbid that, like... <laughs> and then uses it to almost help yeah. them escape. It's like the Caitlyn's that, like, she's playing with two assassins on the team, and, like, then she also has, like, a carry jungler and, like, a semi-carry support or something, and she, like, saves her ult for last just so she can get the kill, you know? Like, yeah. <laughs> why? She's protecting her gazelle. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Saving it for later. Yeah. So. Okay. I play a bit too timid. So, I think, like, overall, that's the huge thing I need to work on is... No, yeah, how it's okay. I play. So, okay, do you have any uh, final questions? Um, a couple. Okay, go ahead. Uh, well, the first thing I wanted to ask you about, because I had heard you talk about it um, fairly recently, was um, Lucian mid. Like, how do you feel post these changes? How do you feel? It, is it viable? I mean, should it be a situational pick, or would you avoid it? I would avoid it at your elo, but when you climb as a player, I think it's fine. Okay. Only at your elo, not because his mechanics are... I mean, obviously, Lucian can have really stellar mechanic, you know, play stuff uh, that's viable. He's not really unique, technically, in his play style or anything like that, but I feel like you'll get a lot of flame. Do you know what I mean? They're like, oh my yeah. god, who picked Lucian mid? <laughs> yeah. You know, like... <laughs> like yeah. And then, um, it doesn't matter even if you do well or something, even if, like, your team loses and you're, like, 13, 2, and 6, they're still gonna blame having an AD carry mid, you know what I mean? Yeah. So it'll generate toxicity, and then on top of that, junglers won't know how to coordinate with it, your team won't know how to coordinate with it, and then there is rules to double AD carry and stuff, and it, it, he's not unique as a champion, he doesn't have unique, um, like, laws to him, such as, like, a Kossadin or a Twisted Fate, but the dynamic of double AD carry does, so that's why I would advise against it. Okay. Yeah. You know? Um let's see. Next question I was gonna ask you, it was in regards to like champion pool. Um am I better off having like a, a big champion pool so I can play a variety of champions in ranked, um, and, and fill. Obviously mm -hmm. I'm spreading myself thin with that. Or am I better off having like a small select group for grinding? You want to you wanna have like five champions max in your main lane. Yeah. And then you wanna okay. you also want maybe like one of those champions to share lanes. For example, uh, Jace, he can go top, mid, and jungle. Well, not really jungle, but he can go top and mid, right? Uh, Rise, he can go top and mid, okay? Uh, Zed, he can go top, mid, and jungle. You know, like, you, 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 would want, you want something to share lanes, and then for your off lanes, you just want to have, like, two champions. Okay. You know? Yes, yeah. Okay. And I've heard you say, like, uh, quite a couple times, like, it, it's, it's better to avoid the more mechanically in-depth champions. In fact, like earlier, I mean, when we were first starting the lessons, you kind of touched base on that when you said, like, it's better to play the more straightforward champions like Ryze, Orianna, and Lulu. Mm -hmm. But if, if I feel like mechanically I'm up for it, and I want to practice and get better at champions, is it acceptable for somebody at my level, it, or a reasonable expectation to climb and for someone at my level and play champions like Zed, or like Twisted Fate? In my opinion, no, for, like, a variable of reasons. Or, for, for like, not a variable. For a myriad of reasons. Um, uh, one of them is, A, your ping, okay? And okay. I, I hate to talk about this, but some champions, like Zed, like Jace, like Lee Sin, you know what I mean? They have combos that can't be executed above X ping, okay? So you're hindering yourself as a player, because you have to, you have to compromise. Do you know what I mean? Um, yeah. You have to compromise your own play because of the ping. Two, 
Um, some of those champions, again, it goes back to, uh, it takes very high level players, you know what I mean? And that does not just mean mechanically, that means understanding of game positioning. Uh, for example, remember that Drake fight where I told you, like, the differences on the spirit fire? Or the, the spirit rush and stuff that you could have done to just gimp biddle back off and then you create, like, these these angles against, uh, Swain and Syndra. And then with Janna, she can fall back to Tristana, you guys can meet at Tribush. Like, those little minuscule knowledge things, they heavily apply to Zed. Do you know what I mean? Because Zed is, he's, he's a fucking, he's a master of, like, shadows and shit. And you have to know how to control all your shadows and, like, manipulate the battlefield with them and use them for zoning and use them for slowing and everything and so there's all these things that like those champions contain that others don't or they do to a lesser degree that it, it's not as punishing do you know what i mean and that's yeah. just why i advise against it i'm not telling you you know what? i'm not the fucking law i'm not like god incarnate i can't actually say no never fucking play zed until you're diamond <laughs> you know like i can't do that but it's just my recommendation if you want to grow as a player you know what i mean okay so you played starcraft 2 okay yeah. Um, you know, if there's this really complex Protoss build, right? Are you going to go and try to do that really complex Protoss build that, like, requires, like, pristine mechanics and, ex you know what I mean? Like, really good control. And then you go and do it, and it's completely botched and butchered, and it may still win, but it could have been so much better. Do you know what I mean? Or are you going to play a macro game, okay, and you're going to just macro up, you're going to make units play slowly, methodically, and achieve victory, and then because you keep doing that so often and repetitively, you develop muscle memory and muscle mechanics, and then your mechanics gradually grow and grow and grow, and then you try to take on that build, you know what I mean, after you go up so many ranks or something, and it's not as tedious on you. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Because you have yeah, so much true. understanding of the, of the game. So, yeah. So then, as a follow-up question to that, because I get where you're coming from, or what you're saying, Mm -hmm. At what LO would you recommend you start expanding into these more complex or more mechanically in-depth champions? Diamond. Diamond. Yep. Okay. So, real quick, just so I can write it down, uh -huh. you said Rise, Lulu, and Oriana would be your main three picks. Yeah, Rise, Wait, Lulu, is Oriana. Is Arya an okay um, one to put in there? No. I mean, I you can keep working on her if she's one of your favorite. Again, I'm not God. You know what I mean? I can't, yeah. like... Or, I'm not, like, fucking... Cthulhu or whatever, like, I, you know what I mean? Like, um, I can't say that, but there was really blaring mistakes that were just, they're really nitty gritty, and this is just yeah. one game. If I watched 100 Ari games of yours, I would, you know what I mean? I would see yeah. way more. Um, so it's like, it would take you so much time investment for just game knowledge and positioning and like, you know what I mean? To really make Ari shine. Do you know what I mean? It doesn't mean don't yeah. play her, it's just my recommendation. You know what I mean? Does that yeah. make sense? No, it makes sense. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. So, I'm just asking because, like, the reason I am, I'm focusing on Zed and Ari, the reason I keep asking is because they are, in fact, like, some of my favorite champions. Okay. Yeah, that, that's all about that. All right. Otherwise, that's pretty much all I have. All right. Yeah. Okay, man. If you come up with anything else or if you read up to the bottom and you get random questions, just feel free to cacao me or message me on Skype. All right, cool. Okay. Uh -huh. Otherwise, I'll hit you up later. Um... Did this take the two hours? Was this two hours? I have no idea. Uh, I haven't checked at... the. I haven't checked the time. I can. We okay. can figure that out soon. Uh, I don't want to open up Skype right now because I don't know where the Skype is uh, located on the screen. Okay. So yeah. yeah um, that's fine. But I'll yeah I'll chat with you on Skype soon. Yep. Let me know. Okay. All right. All right, man. I'll see you later. Later. Bye. See have you. Have a good one. Bye. Yep. See you. <laughs>